So if you were thinking that you needed to go out and buy a fight stick just to play one character, bro, you don't. You don't need to do all that. You can do it perfectly fine with just this. And this is going to be the first time on this channel where we do a webcam. Uh, I do a webcam. It's going to be kind of cool. Well, let's get right into it. Let's not waste any time with this shit, man. I'm going to be munching on these the whole time. These are little baby chips. Smart. So in case you didn't know, negative edging is when you activate moves by releasing a button instead of pressing it. So this is what I do for buttons that are on the opposite sides of each other. You just turn your thumb sideways so that you can press two buttons that are not next to each other. And when I want to release the button, I just slide it over like that. So this is me negative edging for the square button. It's going to feel awkward at first to press buttons that are on the opposite sides of each other. And for you fat fingered motherfuckers out there, it's going to be a little bit more uncomfortable. But I promise you can do this too with just a little more practice. And honestly, the times where you'll need to press buttons that are on the opposite sides of each other are extremely rare anyways. You're not going to be using this in every fucking fight. You're not going to have to do that. I don't even play with default controls. I switch from these controls to default controls just to make this video for you guys and let me tell you I had to relearn everything just to make this guide and the amount of times we actually have to use this are very rare You can get away with a lot of stuff without having to use opposite sided buttons And like I said, it's going to be uncomfortable at first Just practice this for about a week and your muscle memory will naturally catch on to this and it will stop being uncomfortable I need you guys to realize that you don't have to always hold down multiple buttons just to do negative edge type things you can get away with bypassing negative edge by simply pressing the individual buttons with the correct timing the 2s to pierce counter hit frame trap takes no negative edging at all if you just press the button with the correct time this is a great string to use because if they press a button right here they get counter hit and you don't even need to hold down multiple buttons to do this the point is, it looks like you're negative edging, but you really don't even have to. Meaning that you could easily mix this string up and get a grab off of it while conditioning them to keep blocking you at the same time. If they refuse to respect you, you can disrespect them back just by pressing one button during the string. So for an example, I'm going to use down kick as a filler to make sure they can't jump and then hit heavy slash to activate a pose. Now this is not negative edging, but this is just to get you used to how the mechanics work because it's only going to get harder from here going forward. To negative edge with this string, you would hold down heavy slash at the same time as you're pressing down slash. I found out that there's a shortcut when holding down down slash and heavy slash at the same time. On default controls, if you press down slash and heavy slash at the same time, only down slash will come out, which allows you to release the heavy slash button, activating a pose. Be careful not to release the slash button before you release the heavy slash button or else leap will come out. You'll get better with this as you keep practicing. Now it's time to learn how to mix this up and get a full wall break off of it by using a normal grab. Like I said, some of this stuff doesn't even require you to negative edge. All you have to do is hit the buttons at the correct time. All you have to do is hit slash when you see that you got the grab and it'll give you a wall break combo when Eddie comes up. Positive bonus. So that's enough with the shit that doesn't even require negative edging like that. I just wanted you guys to get used to the mechanics and understand how this stuff works. Because like I said, it's only going to get harder from here going forward. So that was just for those of you who just did not really understand negative edge and how that shit even works. As a Zato player, it's only going to be an endless amount of difficulty because you're going to have to move Eddie around the screen while holding buttons. <laughs> Yeah, I'm in. Oh, yeah.
I missed, but you get the point. You guys were asking me for the frog video, the frog loops video. This is how you do the frog loops. You're gonna have to move Eddie while holding down multiple buttons. Quarter circle back heavy slash and then hold down the punch button. As soon as they get off the ground, release the punch button. You have to hold down forward to make Eddie move out far away from you. And while you're holding down forward, you have to be holding down the slash button. So right here I'm holding down the slash button and what you're going to do is you're going to have to wait until the opponent starts to fall. And you have to give it a second. There's a delay to it. If you rush this, they're going to fly over your head and end up behind you. Notice how I'm holding slash and heavy slash at the same time, but I'm going to release slash before I release heavy slash. The second half of this combo is actually faster than the first part. So once they start falling, you just release slash again, but it's going to be faster than the first part. If you're doing this right, Eddie is always going to bring them within range for a close slash, and the window for the close slash is actually pretty wide. The only reason why I'm missing is because I'm not confirming the super with the down heavy slash fast enough. That's really it. I'm not playing with my normal control, so just don't be like me. Instead of using pierce, try putting the frog behind them. That'll stop them from jumping just in case you're a little late. See, I knew I could do it. If I can do it, you can do it too. Like, I'm not even playing with my controls. I don't even... This shit is all unfamiliar to me right now. So now we're going to move on and do a side switch. We're going to put him in a frog loop from the front side, meaning no knockdown. It's the same thing that we did before, except for we're going to pick up off the second hit of Pierce, holding down forward and only releasing when Eddie is behind him. It's going to take some time to learn how to move Eddie while you're doing all of that, but just know that you can hold down forward and still use your down slash and still use your heavy slash. Holding down forward does not prevent you from doing shit. And since that super refills your meter, you can still keep up the pressure with Eddie. That's why I like to use this super. If they block all of this shit, you can still mix it up and get a command trap, refilling your meter anyways. If you hit the opponent with a raw leap at point blank range, you get a free raw break. You could really just choose whatever you want to do there. It really doesn't matter. I just try to be stylish for no reason. I do not care about damage. I care more about looking cool. If you're close enough, you could also confirm it from a close slash. A lot of people don't know they're supposed to mash right there. Last thing I'm going to talk about is the Pierce Invite Hell Frame Trap. I still to this day have not seen anybody mention that you can shortcut to Invite Hell after doing a 2S. You actually don't have to do a down down input to do Invite Hell. If you press down heavy slash after 2S within a certain window, it'll automatically do it for you. It's like a built-in shortcut that's hidden for Zato that you can do it like this. After somebody blocks Invite Hell, they get to jump. So if you do it like this, they won't be able to jump by using Pierce. If you were having problems with Negative Edge before watching this video, I hope that I cleared some stuff up for you. I hope that this hand cam is actually doing something. Like, I don't even know if this is even helping. Like, I'm trying to help you guys, but I don't even know what else I could do besides this. So I just decided to do a hand cam. You guys got to see me for the first time or whatever. Uh, don't be roasting me because I'll get on your ass. But I want you guys to practice holding down two buttons at the same time and then just sliding one off while holding the other one. And that's going to take some time to get used to. But after about a week of practicing it, you should get it down. Like, all you have to do is get your fingers used to it. And for you fat fingered fucks out there, it's going to be even tougher. But you can still do this. Just don't press those buttons. You're going to have to finesse it finesse it this is like the sixth zato guide that i've done so far and we're not even close to finishing zato because there's just so much stuff to cover bro like no matter how good you think you are with zato you're gonna learn something new like every day 
it's crazy. This character has so much death, bro. It's just crazy. I'm just gonna disappear now, cause y'all know I don't do outros. That's why there's no screen playing right now. I'm just vibing, for real. I'm still high. It's four in the morning. My college classes started. I'm not even doing that shit. Fuck college, man. I just, I just cannot.